You nervous about taking the truck, Dad? On the sand? Uh, what? <sighs> Excuse me. <laughs> what? Are Gosh. you worried about the truck in the sand? Uncle Bill's filling up the gas. Taking out the air, not filling up the gas. Oh, the <laughs> that's what I meant. Uncle Bill is taking out air. Let's see, it won't get stuck. We won't get stuck if, you, if, if we do it correctly. There's a chance, but I don't think we will. Well, if you don't like it, we don't have to do it again tomorrow. Tomorrow will be longer. Um, I think shorter. Yeah, this is pretty soft. Your your truck is definitely trucking through. Just trucking. Oh. oh. What's going on guys? We're here in North Carolina fishing the surf for some big red drum, big gator blues, um, and I've got a special rig to show you. Check that out. That's it. It's a really simple rig. And basically, it's a fish finder rig, except it gets stopped off right here, so it doesn't keep going up, and it's got a really short leader line. This is really great because you are able to cast out really far. Usually when I use fish finder rigs, one, I don't have this on here, and two, this line is usually this long, right? And when it's this long, it's hard to cast it out because it starts to helicopter. I'm sure some of you have experienced that. Today, I'm here, uh, today I spent the basically the entire day just watching the locals here, learning about the rigs, learning about the different baits they like to use, and uh, everyone is using a very similar rig to this. Actually, my friend, someone I met on the beach here, Santosh, he, sh he showed me how to tie this. And if you're watching this, Santosh, thank you. I really appreciate it. It starts with a shock line. It goes to a barrel swivel, to, to, to a bead right here, fish finder with an eight ounce sinker, and another bead. And this bead is there so that it will not get damaged. The knots right here will not get damaged from the sinker weight. I've got a six aught hook on here, which is small compared to the ones the guys here are using. Um, we're, we've seen some pretty big fish pulled out of here. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to land a fish today. I'm just gonna let you guys know that right now. It, it's not, it's not like I can go here, cast my line out, land a big fish. It's a learning process. You know, everybody is, is we're here on this earth to learn. We're here fishing to learn and experience the wonders of nature. Um, if anything, we're going to show you a spectacular. There's going to be a bunch of people catching some really big fish. For, for rods and reels and line, um, I was a little confused at first. I came here and everyone's using these really, really long rods. They call them, what do they call them? They call them heavers. Heavers are around 12 to 13 feet and they're able to cast eight ounces weights which is what you need to be able to cast over here. So my rod of choice today, I did not have, um, I don't have a heaver. I plan on getting one because they look so cool. Um, but I'm using my dad's cool rod. He's got a G Loomis. This is one of the old ones, Surf Series. It's a 10 foot six heavy rod. Doesn't really feel too heavy. I like the action on this. Um, and I've got that paired with my hand-me-down. Uh, Daddy gave me a uh, Shimano Stratic. And I've been using this for years now. It's, it's been great. It's been working really well. I've got 30 pound braid on here and 40 pound shock leader. Now, if you guys don't know what shock leader is, we just made an episode about what a shock leader is. We went to a bait shop called On12 right next to this spot. And he showed us how to tie a shock leader, taught us why it's important to throw a shock leader. Um, a basic summary is you want a shock leader because if you're throwing over and over and over again, heavy weights, it's gonna wear down your line. A shock leader is there so that it can absorb some of that pressure off of your line. Um, we'll link that right up here. Boop, there it is. How are you feeling? Are you nervous? I am not feeling nervous. I'm calm and ready. Good. But there's vomit on my sweater already. Stop it. It's probably mom's spaghetti. <laughs> Let's 
So the bait of choice around here is either mullet or tuna belly. And this chunk of meat cost me 10 bucks. Uh, this is a very fresh cut. It was not frozen. And what he said is you don't need a big old chunk. Oh, this should be more than enough for those big, which is surprising. You would think they would want to eat a big thing. But around here, this size works just fine. with a hundred pound mono because I'm going for a red drum you don't necessarily need a hundred pound but there's a lot of bluefish out there too mono is good for abrasion whereas braid will just snap right off
it's like the same four guys who just keep landing these trophy after trophy after big fish after big fish after big fish. And it makes it seem like it's easy. But they know something that we don't know. They know where the hole is. And I see them, they're casting it way out there. They've got these huge 15 feet heavers. These really long rods that are able to cast it so far. And you don't see many people using spinning reels. Mostly everyone here is using uh, conventional reels. Um, my buddy told me that that's because that's how it allows them to cast so far. So you can't get your bait out far enough? I can't get it out far enough. There's a shoal out there. If you can cast past that shoal, that's the jackpot. If anybody needs help with surf fishing or saltwater fishing, pier fishing, um, we have a store specializing in helping beginners learn to catch fish. It's in the link in the description below. That was a blast. It was a, it was definitely something awesome to witness. Um, but let me say this, I was not prepared with my gear. I had my gear for Virginia Beach. Nothing, not, I didn't have my big long rod to sling it out there far. Um, but like I said, even if I had that, I don't know if I'll be one of these guys catching all the fish. It's the same four or five guys, one after another after another, and they're doing something different. Um, this is because they've been fishing here for a long time. They, they know the holes, they know how to, how to work. They know how to work their rod. They know how to catch the fish. So I was not able to hook up to a fish, but that's okay. You know why? Because I learned exactly how to do it. I came out here, I saw all the locals doing it. I learned their rigs. I saw what kind of rods and reels they're using. So next year, I'm coming back. I'm smarter, I'll be wiser, and I'll be ready for them. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching all the other huge fish come out of the water, because I know I did. I spent a lot of time just talking to them. Didn't spend too much time fishing. Um, and I think that's important. If you're getting to a new spot, you don't want to just, you don't, diving right in is one thing, but you should observe, watch, listen, learn. If you like our show, uh, think about subscribing. If you subscribe, push that little notification bell. And if you're already subscribed, thank you guys. We're going to keep putting out awesome stuff for you guys. Um, let us know in the comments below what you want to see next. See ya.